You know, one thing that kind of concerns me about our world now, and maybe it's always been this way, but just the internet world and social media just amplifies it, is how black and white everything seems to have to be. And that's not necessarily in reference to race, just black and white. It's either this or it's this. It's the absolutism. There is absolutely nothing else in between. You can't have any of that gray area, even though we know for all intents and purposes that the vast majority of the world is in that gray space and there is very little true black and white. There is some of that, but the way we react on the internet and with social media, it's just fascinating to me to see how it's gotta be all of one extreme of all the other extreme that could come to any type of opinion. It doesn't just have to be politics either. That could be sports, it could be any number of different freaking things. And everybody's looking for validation of this and validation of that and so forth. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things that when you go on podcast or you do things, you have to understand um, that those things could be perceived in a certain light and those could be in one direction or the other. So I know it came out this week that newly hired WWE writer, Kenise Mobley, was on a podcast talking about getting hired to WWE, which once those comments were revealed, created a lot of backlash amongst the wrestling media and certainly wrestling fans. And ultimately on Friday, it was announced that she had been fired by WWE. And there's going to be a lot of black and white on this issue, including some black and white about the fact that she was targeted because she was a black woman, that she was targeted because of that fact and that fact alone. And that's what ultimately led to her losing her job, which of course is fucking dumb in the sense of, of all the things you could talk about with professional wrestling, and it's sketchy to terrible, horrible, abysmal record on race and gender that still permeates throughout the industry today. Look at the leadership of WWE. Look at the leadership of AEW. Lots of pearlies there. The point I'm getting at is you've got so many other clear cut examples in historical trends that point to the problems that have been in the business are in the business, continue to be in the business, and unfortunately will continue to be in the business, this is not fucking one of them. Because you could just as easily say, well, there was another WWE writer that got targeted, da, 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 and she was a black woman too. You know, as I've had people tell me over the years, sometimes correlation does not equal causation. There could be a correlation, but that doesn't mean that's a cause. And if anything, you could sit there and say, okay, what's the other common theme? They're also women. Because I've seen plenty of other people in recent years that were comedians and other folks that got hired onto WWE's creative team and people seem to have pretty good reactions to it. We're generally happy for them. So maybe there's something to it, but it feels like you're really grasping at straws here. And just like the people that are celebrating in some ways or saying good riddance to her getting fired, understand that Kenise Mobley represents a system and represents a sy symptom, excuse me, of some of the problems with WWE. Now you could say hiring somebody that doesn't really know the product in and of itself shouldn't automatically be a bad thing, doesn't have to be a bad thing, and that is true. But let's take a look at what she actually said and talk about that. On this podcast, she, Kenise Mobley said, and I quote, Yes, I've been hired, just been hired by WWE. Given the things that you know about me in my entire life and what I'm into, yes, that's surprising. Yes, also a surprise for me. They did not require me to know anything about wrestling, but I do have a background in film production and comedy writing, and they're like, perfect, come on in. <laughs> So I'm on the Monday Night Raw team. So there's Monday Night Raw and Friday Night Smackdown. And the people I know that are on it are Bobby. His name is either Bobby Ashley or Bobby Lashley. And I really should know that. Mm -hmm. He's like this giant black guy. And he and the people who are a part of his crew, I know that they call, or at least as of last year, they call themselves the Hurt Business. The Hurt Business. They wear suits and they're like, we're cool. I went on a date and this guy was like, don't you feel like you're... 
don't you feel like you're diminishing your dignity writing for WWE? And I was like, um, I'm getting paid to do the thing that I've been working on for eight years. And this is twice or no, this is three times what I make at my nonprofit job. So yeah, I'm going to take it. End quote. Here's, here's the thing about this. We've known for years that the WWE seems to proactively seek out writers for their creative team, their creative process, that are totally disconnected from professional wrestling. It's almost like it's a preferred qualification. It is. When you look at it over the years, it feels like that's a preferred qualification. They don't want people to know shit about wrestling. They want people to know about comedy and they want them to know about writing. And I'm not saying that things like writing skills, comedic talents aren't important as part of the WWE creative process. They certainly are. And in today's modern world, the reality is you're not just going to have a bunch of old dodgy curmudgeons, former wrestlers and former bookers and former promoters that you could just sit on your creative team and run everything through them. Times change, the world has changed. So fundamentally, in and of itself, it is okay to bring in different people from different backgrounds who have been on different platforms, serve different functions. When you do that right and you handle that mix right, it can lead to you achieving your best possible results. But you got to look at this and say, you know, she was kind of airing out some of the WWE's dirty laundry here in terms of the fact that they're like, hey, you don't know anything about our fucking product. Perfect. Come on in. And to those that are sitting there and saying it's automatically fan backlash that got her, you know, there's even conflicting reports about whether or not it was even the fan reaction that necessarily led to her demise with the company. They felt more so that she was embarrassed and so the company was embarrassed and so forth and didn't think it was putting them in a good light in general. So how can you say that it was automatically fan backlash that led to her being fired? The reality is, is you don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. But again, we get to this place where everything's got to be so black and white. And many times that is not the case. And what really concerns me here is again, with all of the legitimate valid things that you can say about professional wrestling and prejudice and discrimination and racism against fucking races and ethnicities, and genders, and gender identities, and preferences. This is the thing that you're going to hang your hat on to? No, not everything is fucking about that. And that shit's got to stop. Because when you start lumping this in with all that other legitimate shit, you lose the fucking plot. How about the fact that people have to take some accountability for their own actions and their own shit. And in this particular case, you would sit there and say, hey, it's pretty poor judgment to go on a podcast. And the people that are trying to spin it like, it was a comedy podcast. And she'd be honestly, what's so fucking funny about it? Like you're basically admitting that you don't know what the fuck you're getting into. You're basically saying you didn't bother to do basic job research 101 when you're getting ready to take on this new role. Yeah, you could be learning it and shit. Oh, no shit you're going to. But you should have some baseline fundamental knowledge and understanding, especially when the people that you're going to be writing for, their livelihoods, their careers, their financial success or failure depends in part upon what you're going to do. It's pretty flippantly reckless and irresponsible to sit there and throw that out there like this is something to giggles about. Like when you're sitting there and talking about Bobby Ashley or Bobby Lashley, that's the fucking world champ of the brand that you're going to work on. If you can't even know that, then you didn't deserve a job with fucking WWE. That's just basic job professionalism, job hunting 101. And to those that are going to sit there and say, well, you get hired to a lot of other jobs and you don't know all the particulars or the specifics and you sit there and you get trained on that. I'm not saying you don't. Well, let's say you compare this to a sales job. You could teach people how to sell the product. You could teach them the features and benefits and all that other bullshit. But at the end of the day, people, customers buy from people they like. They buy the why, not the what or the how. Think about Apple. People bought the first iPhone all those years ago and didn't even have a fucking camera on it because of the why, not the what or the how. 
this is a cell phone that does this, this, and this. It's more about the why. It was the vision of Steve Jobs. It was the vision of Apple and what they were trying to do. It was a smartphone. It was changing the entire game. It was the why is why people fucking bought it. The what and the how were secondary. The what and the how had to feed into the why. So the point I'm getting at here is, yes, when you start a new job, you're not going to know everything about it. But there is still a basic piece of if I'm getting hired into this job, if I don't know everything about the role, even though you should be able to read up on a LinkedIn or Indeed or Career Builder, you know, jobs.com, whatever um, fucking job posting and see like the particulars, the responsibilities, basic qualifications, preferred qualifications, any other information about the role. You can do research. You can do any number of things. Research about the company. I guess basic shit you're supposed to be prepared for when you go into a damn interview. She couldn't even do that. So does it seem a bit harsh on the one hand that she got fired from a situation that she maybe shouldn't have been hired from for begin with? No, not really. Is it a thing to me that this is more of a symptom of the much larger problem? Yes. Do I think it's kind of stupid that the WWE would sit there and hire her? And this is no different what she said in the podcast from what she was at the time she was hired. Does it seem really stupid to me that a company who's been doing this shit for two fucking decades, now all of a sudden it gets out something like this and they're going to sit there and fire her? Yeah, that seems really fucking stupid. Because if you didn't care enough about this shit when you hired her, why would you now care enough about this shit to fire her? That makes no goddamn sense. And again, no. People don't have to have this in-depth knowledge of professional wrestling to be a part of the creative team. Like, if you look at the larger creative team, I think people like fucking Dana Warrior are on the creative team. What a fucking joke. You want to talk about nepotism in the nutshell and giving sympathy jobs and paying out sympathy salaries. There's fucking one. Mick Foley's son, Dewey Foley, I believe he's the lead writer for 205 Live. Here comes the flaming keyboard, fingers of fire, but here's a fucking deal. That's nepotism in a nutshell. He didn't earn his fucking job. He didn't deserve his fucking job. You know goddamn good and well why he got his role. But, but the point I'm getting at here is let's look at this in a slightly different light. The problem is when you keep hiring people with a lack of understanding of wrestling and you bring them in and the room is too overbalanced with that many type of folks, then you look at the product and you see how many of you, when it comes to Raw or SmackDown, doesn't matter, complain week in and week out about how shitty this show is. Well, then you look at the creative team members that they're bringing in, the writers that they're bringing in. It's not hard to fucking understand why. Especially at the end of the day that you're bringing in writers that Vince is just sitting there and tearing up the goddamn scripts anyways and he's writing the show for one and nobody fucking gets him because he doesn't even know where the fuck his senile ass is at this point in time. The going out and so often trying to bring in these people that don't have a baseline knowledge or understanding of the company to some degree is a major problem. You could say, well, WWE has record profits. Yeah, but that's a happy little accident and more of a product in the circumstance of the times than anything. They have lost millions upon millions of domestic fans and viewers over the past two decades and accelerated that loss over the past 10 years. You could say, well, that's another example of correlation does not equal causation. But I think you have enough evidence here to sit there and say, what are some of the fundamental things that are going on with the company and what has that resulted in? You want to sit there and believe she was fired just because she was black, so be it. You want to sit there and believe she was fired just because she was a woman, so be it. You want to sit there and think she was fired solely or targeted because she was a black woman getting hired into WWE and he had a lot of petty white people and even some petty black people that wanted to see her brought down, so be it. Because there's no point really speaking logic to you at this point in time. She went on a podcast and basically popped her off, mouth off. It, wasn't, it didn't seem that harmful in the grand scheme of things. And really, honestly, it's not. I personally don't see what the fucking big deal was at this point because if they hired her, nothing fundamentally changed except the fact that the company felt like for some damn reason they got egg on their face over this when the whole time these are exactly the type of individuals that they've been hiring on the creative team for two fucking decades now. You got all types of writers that are coming from TV and film and comedy backgrounds that don't know shit about the fucking product. 
Why is it such a big deal now? Because these comments got out and it made you look like jackasses? Well, you should already look like jackasses. Look at your ratings for Raw every goddamn week. It should serve as a good example. Like, remember that anywhere you go at any point in time, you can be under the fucking microscope. Your words can have consequences. Your words can have impact no matter how seemingly harmless they may be. And in this sense, they are relatively harmless. But if you sit there and say, hey, they're just calling her out because of this. No, did you ever think about the fact that they're calling her out because of the fact that she doesn't even seem to care enough to know about the fucking world champion of the goddamn brand that she's hired to write for? Where is the sense of personal accountability here? Where is the sense of holding somebody to task for exercising poor judgment and decision making? She's kind of open mouth and inserted foot here. No, I don't think she should have been fired. I'll be clear on that. Because again, what did she do that was so fundamentally different than anybody else? And it's not like this is some dirty little secret that got aired out like we're breaking kayfabe all the goddamn sudden. We've been knowing this shit for decades. Now, I've, I've, I've looked her up because I never really honestly heard of her before. Watched some of her stand-up shit and I'm like, she reminded me of just another not funny person. <laughs> I gotta say so. <laughs> just not funny. And I think sometimes that could honestly be, you know, guys don't always connect with, you know, female comedy from a female perspective and a female mindset. And that might be true. You know, it's just like I see a lot of people talk about how funny Tiffany Haddish is. And I'm like, to me, somebody like Wanda Sykes is funny. Tiffany Haddish is anything but fucking funny. But whatever. Whatever. Um, but, yeah. I mean, you can't go on a podcast talking about he got hired somewhere. Even reference it. She could have just sat there and said, yeah, I've been hired by WWE. You know, I'm learning about the product. I'm excited for this opportunity. It's a chance of a lifetime. You see how differently that comes across? You could sit there and acknowledge that you don't know a lot about what's currently going on, don't know a lot about the talent without sitting there and basically busting your own ass over out in the public for it. There are ways you could spin this, the ways you could do it. And you could say, well, this is trying to come across as funny. I mean, what's it really? Oh, she sounded like an idiot here. So I, I do feel bad for Kenise Mobley because this was not a reason she should have been fired. I agree. She already got hired. None of the facts or circumstances changed. Yes, she exercised really bad, dumb judgment. But was this really so critically, god-awfully bad? Yeah. I mean, if anything, you could say they fired somebody they should have never hired to begin with. But all the while, once they hired her, what the fuck's the difference between her and so many others? Important reminder. Do basic research when you're job hunting. Be measured and careful with some of the things that you say, especially if it's on a public platform where it can be shared with others. Number three, just as critically important of a reminder, all the money in the fucking world ain't worth the bother with damn WWE. Like a Kenise Mobley could say, I'm going to make two, no, three times what I make with my nonprofit, so yeah, I'm going to take it. Yeah, and no matter what, how long is that going to last? They treat you like cattle. You are a worthless commodity to them that the first chance they have as a company, they're going to discard you like yesterday's trash. It's just not worth it. And at this point in time, I think it's psycho for anybody to want to apply to get a job with WWE Creative. I mean, why the hell would you? Yeah, you'll get paid a little bit more, but you'll be gone in no time. And then what the fuck do you do? The only way you can potentially look at it is I'm going to take this as a chance to put it on my resume because it's helping me to grow for that next step. This is not a destination. This is just a step in the process. But other than that, I promise you at the end of the day, Kenise Mobley will be just fine. More people know about her than did before, frankly. That is absolutely true. 
So she could take that and spin it as a positive. And I promise you, six months, a year, 12, 18 months from now, she's going to be fucking thrilled that this thing with WWE fell through. I promise you. They did you a favor, my dear.